what we will cover in this webinar is a glimpse of into what Node.js is and you know we'll look at a very simple uh, application. All right. So in this webinar, uh, we'll look at NPM, we'll look at Node.js Express, uh, we'll take a brief look at templates and we'll look at a simple restful web application in Node.js. All right, what is Node.js? I'm sure a lot of you may have already heard the term, which is why you're probably here. It's essentially an open source cross-platform runtime environment. Now that sounds like a lot of words, but uh, you know, what Node.js allows you to do is write code in JavaScript, which can be run on almost any platform. So right now, you know, we support OS X, which is obviously you have Linux and even Unix and Linux variants. In fact, some of you may or may not be familiar with the Raspberry Pi, which runs on an ARM architecture, even that can run Node.js. The premise of Node.js was based on Google's V8 JavaScript engine, and it's actually very suited for server-side deployments to create very, very, very large scalable applications, and we'll take a look at that. Some of you may be thinking that, oh, this is JavaScript. I already know what this is all about. Node.js is more than just JavaScript. Yes, JavaScript is the language of choice, but Node.js allows you to use sockets. It allows you to use, uh, you know, connections and a lot of other features, uh, which you'll get to know once you do the course. Okay, so one of the most important features about Node.js is it's single-threaded. Yes, you heard it right. It is a single-threaded architecture. And what this allows you to do is you don't have to worry about things like race conditions, deadlocks, and other problems that go with multi-threading. Let me explain why the designers and the philosophy behind the people who chose Node.js decided to make it single-threaded. The designers essentially realized that most of the delay that comes in large scalable computing apps actually comes from I.O. So most of the time the CPU is actually waiting for I.O. So what they decided that all the blocking I.O. requests would be sent off to a separate thread pool and the entire core server architecture would be running under an event which will be processing the event in a uh, single loop. Now what this means is because it is event driven and all it does not do any blocking I.O. that is you know, even something like writing to a file is sent as an async, asynchronous call, right? This allows you to very rapidly scale uh, a Node.js application. Let's, let us take a, an example of Apache. If you, most of you are probably familiar with the Apache web server. The way Apache works is every time there's a con connection and based on the configuration, either Apache will fork a new process or it will start a new thread. So what this happens is, uh, if you have say 500 connections, it actually starts off 500 threads, which instantly becomes a problem for the server. Whereas in Node.js, everything is even driven, everything runs on a single thread. So it's, you actually have the main thread handling all the requests. So almost no function in Node directly performs IO, so the server never blocks. And because it never blocks, you know, you can have your app develop scalable systems. Now. NPM, NPM used to be Node Packet Manager, but it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it allows you to install Node dependencies, it allows you to install almost any uh, application, open source application, which has been, uh, you know, developed with Node. It's, uh, and what this also allows you to do is, it, now it has become kind of a generic package manager. So some of you may be familiar with OS level package managers, such, such as APT on Debian and Ubuntu and uh, YUM on CentOS. So similarly, NPM is a package manager. Um, you can you have reusable modules and packages written by various developers, and you can even publish your own uh, NPM packages. Typically, there are two ways uh, we install NPM packages. Uh, you can install it locally, which is uh, you know, and we'll see an example of that where we'll just put it in a folder uh, and install it on my own uh, modular project, and then you can use it globally where it kind of installs it across um, all for all users across the server. So I'm uh, hoping that, uh, you know, everyone so far is following what I'm saying. Again, if you have any questions or if you need a clarification, please uh, type it out uh, in the questions uh, window and I will hand, uh, take on the requests as they come in. So we'll look at a couple of use cases of Node.js. Walmart 
actually uh, came to the conclusion that using a new technology like Node.js uh, was far more beneficial than you know any inherent risk. Now, typically, when a new technology comes out, you have frameworks which don't support them. Uh, you know, you may not have uh, full code. But uh, Node.js is actually quite old in the sense, you know, it's already been around for several years, and uh, Walmart decided to go down that path. What they did was they re-engineered their mobile app to run on Node.js, uh, where all the front-end code gets executed on the back-end. And what their VP of mobile architecture says is because Walmart actually rely on services from a lot of vendors, from a lot of service providers, right? What they have built is they've actually built a node layer um, as a front front end to those services, and it allows to those services very, very well. Okay, excellent. Uh, we have a question from Bhupesh who has asked, uh, you know, Node.js versus AngularJS. Node.js is actually a server-side application. What Node.js allows you to do is uh, create uh, server-side JavaScript applications, which allows you to actually create uh, web sockets, which will serve out content. It uh, it allows you to serve out content. It to, uh, um, you know deal uh, give out templates. It allows you to give uh, give out views and so on. Angular JS is almost exclusively on the front end. There is some amount of overlap. For example, if you use Node JS uh, with uh, you know something like Jade which will have routing, it's going to have uh, you know, a controller. But AngularJS almost exclusively is used for creating single page applications. Uh, you will be making calls mostly from your browser on the client side. So there is some amount of overlap, but AngularJS does not have a backend part to it. You're not going to use AngularJS to actually create the rest backend, which you can typically do with any uh, Technology, whether it is Node.js, whether it is uh, Cake PHP, or even Java or .NET. So we have a question uh, as well. If Node.js is single-threaded, is there a bottleneck in supporting concurrent number of? Is there a performance benchmark that you can share? So, because it is single-threaded, the design philosophy is we try not to do CPU-intensive tasks. If you have computations, if you have intensive CPU com computations those are typically not not suited for a Node.js kind of application. So Node.js uh, has come out with a, a web worker kind of a concept where CPU intensive tasks can be spawned off, but typically uh, CPU intensive tasks are not expected in Node.js. Usually things like rendering, you know, front ends or getting, uh, you know, giving you, bringing out your templates, and so on are very, very well handled in Node.js. But something like, you know, if you want to encode an image, resize an image, maybe not so well suited for Node.js unless you're using web workers and so on, and which we're not going to cover in this part of the presentation. Now, is there a bottleneck in supporting concrete number of requests? There's not, because what happens is, uh, when you do a typical I.O., so for example, if there's a Node.js call, and if you're making a, say, a SQL query, what's gonna happen is you spin off the SQL query as an asynchronous call, which means that the SQL query is kind of sent, and the main thread continues processing the other requests. Once a SQL query finishes and reverts, then you get a callback function, which you typically write a callback function when you send the async request, and that callback function is called in Node.js. So what this allows you to do, serve multiple requests and you do not have the overhead of uh, switching threads and you do not have the overhead of context switching that is typically associated with both threads and with uh, you know, process forks. Coming back to our uh, presentation. So we've seen Walmart use Node.js. I mean, we will look at another example, LinkedIn, who is also heavily using Node.js. Most of you may have used the LinkedIn mobile and tablet application. You will be very, very surprised to know that 95% of the application is actually HTML5 and web-based. That is right. Most of the application is actually a container 
calling web pages HTML5 content of their site. They have an application, yes, an Android app and an iPad app. Uh, it does a basic function, but 95% of the app is web based. And it's because of the speed of Node.js and the fact that, uh, you know, you can run, uh, you know, actually deal with front end code on the back end has allowed them uh, to actually build an application in, uh, in this, in, or architect this application in this manner. So what, what they've actually done is now, they've actually increased the number of uh, users and events they can handle on this uh, particular, uh, using this particular technology. In fact, even driven technology is not new. If you look at Nginx, uh, some of you may be familiar with Nginx, which is uh, a web server. Nginx has always employed the event structure when handling with HTTP requests. And what, has, and what this has allowed Nginx to do is it is allowed to serve far more number of requests uh, than Apache. Typically when you run Apache, your, your server is going to start crawling after you have, obviously based on how much RAM and CPU you have, but it'll start crawling compared to a similar server running Nginx. And Node.js has the same philosophy, but obviously in, not only incorporates a very nice backend written in JavaScript, but also a large number of libraries which will allow applications uh, you know, natively. Over JavaScript, does Node.js have only one advantage that it executes requests efficiently? Tanmay asks. Okay. So it's not over JavaScript really, Tanmay. What what this does, what Node.js does is, no, JavaScript is a language in which you know Node.js actually processes, right? So Node.js, the the philosophy behind Node.js is with single uh, server threaded, single threaded server model, and you know they use JavaScript. And remember, I I spoke about uh, Google's V8 JavaScript engine. So what Google's V8 JavaScript engine actually does is it actually compiles the JavaScript into machine and assembly code. So this is actually uh, I'm I'm not sure how many of you were aware of this, but because of this, it gives you a sizable improvement in the JavaScript execution as opposed to if you were natively running JavaScript. When you natively run JavaScript or even Perl or PHP, you, you interpret the code. It's not really Pyte code, right? But the V8 engine actually compiles, and when I say compile, it does it dynamically on the runtime. It compiles your JavaScript code into a, you know, a machine binary specific to the machine on which it's running. All right. And we look at one more uh, specific use case. Uh, so Voxer, um, you know, it, when, when they first uh, built it out, their CTO ran a test, and this is coming back to one of the questions is asked, that how many connections he could open on a single server using Node.js. And he decided to open as many connections as he could, just to see where things would fall down, you know, when would the server break. And what he found out that with Node, he could open all of them. So he used up all his available ports. Now, you know, as you may know, you are actually allowed to use up only, and I say only, you know, in a small term, uh, 65,535 ports on a single machine, right? That's six, five. So Node, he actually exhausted all the 65K ports using a single process. And because it, is so memory efficient, you know, he just found it ast astounding. So if we look at the, uh, you know, the advantages uh, of using Node, right? I mean, we can build server-side applications. It's highly scalable, you know, with a low memory con uh, consumption. And on top of that, you know, you have a vibrant community support. You have a lot of, uh, you know, ready-made packages, uh, you know, which ensures that uh, this works out. Okay, uh, I've also, uh, you know, there's some questions around benchmarks, uh, around X number of requests. So what I'm gonna do for this is, I'm just gonna uh, note this down and what we will do is uh, after the webinar, uh, we'll send out uh, some of these uh, benchmarks where you actually compare, uh, you know, performance of uh, Node, uh, you know, versus performance of say a similar backend uh, architecture. Okay. So is Node.js good for concurrent? Absolutely, and you know the way you uh, 
uh, write it out is like we just explained in this particular use case. It's very well suited for uh, concurrent request handling and not only that, because it's scalable, it is simple to scale. Uh, you can you know add as many servers as you want and you actually will get more bang for your buck. You're gonna get a very efficient uh, you know server usage uh, for uh, using Node.js.